Let's talk about completing the square. Specifically, completing the square to solve a quadratic equation. First, I'm going to list the steps that you would use to solve a quadratic equation with the completing the square method. Then we will look at an example problem where we follow the steps to solve a quadratic equation. And then we'll look at a practice problem that you can solve on your own. To solve a quadratic equation, of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, where a is the coefficient on the x squared, b is the coefficient, the number in front of the x, and the c is the constant, you first have to rewrite it so the coefficient in front of a is one. And in this situation, that would involve dividing every term in the equation by a, every term in the quadratic equation on both sides by the number that's in front of x squared, and we will perform that operation when we do an example problem after the steps are done being discussed. The second step is to isolate the constant term. Now the constant term is the C in this equation, and that will be accomplished by subtracting it from both sides of the equation. Third step would be to use the value of B, which is the number in front of X, the coefficient on X, cut it in half, square it, and then add that value to both sides of the equation. It's not as complicated as it sounds, and we, when we do an example in a minute, you'll see that it, has, it is actually quite easy. After that step, we'll have to factor the left side of the equation, and then take the square root of both sides, including a plus or minus in front of the constant that will be on the right side of the equation, and at that point, you can finally solve for x, which isn't too difficult once the other steps are completed. Let's look at an example. 2x squared plus 12x plus 14 equals 0 is an example of a quadratic equation. A quadratic equation with rational coefficients can be solved with completing the square. And we're going to go through the six steps that we just discussed to solve this equation. It's a quadratic. The degree of a quadratic uh, equation is two, so there will be two solutions to this equation, or one double root, uh, but two solutions to this quadratic equation. The first step in solving this quadratic equation using the completing the square method is to rewrite the equation so that the coefficient on x squared, the number in front of x squared, is one. In this problem, the coefficient on x squared, the number in front of x squared, is a two. And to rewrite the equation so that the, that is a 1, we're going to have to divide by 2. Because taking 2 divided by 2 will give us 1x squared. But to keep the equation balanced, we have to divide every term on both sides of the equation by that value of 2. Divide every term on each side of the equation by 2. The second term, 12x divided by 2, becomes 6x. The third term, 14 divided by 2, is 7. And on the right side of the equation, 0 divided by 2 is still 0. This makes the equation x squared plus 6x plus 7 equals 0. We've rewritten the equation so that the coefficient, the number in front of x squared, is 1. That being done, we'll move on to step 2, which is to isolate the constant term. The constant term is the term that doesn't have a variable. It's constant. And we want to isolate that constant term on the right side of the equation. So we'll do that by subtracting 7 from both sides. And when I subtract 7 from both sides of the equation, that leaves me with x squared plus 6x on the left and negative 7 on the right. The third step in completing the square requires me to add a value to both sides of the equation. So the way the equation is written on this slide is x squared plus 6x plus blank equals negative 7 plus blank. I'm going to add a special value to both sides of the equation. And that value, this is where I actually complete the square, that value comes from using the value of b, which is the coefficient of x. Using that value, I'm going to cut it in half. And when I take 6 and cut it in half, that gives me 3, and then I'm going to take that value of 3, and I'm going to square it, 
and that gives me 9, and 9 is the value that I will add to both sides of the equation. 9 is the value that completes the square. Negative 7 plus 9 is 2. And realize that the equation that I've written here, x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals 2, has the same two solutions as the original problem. I'm just writing it in a way that allows me to solve the equation after I do the next three steps. Step four is to factor. And once I add 9 to both sides of the equation, this becomes a factorable quadratic. So I'm going to factor x squared plus 6x plus 9. And not only is it factorable, but it's factorable as a perfect square. That's why adding 9 to both sides is said to complete the square. It gives us a quadratic that is factorable as a perfect square. And that quadra the factorization is this. I'm going to take the variable x squared, and I'm going to write it without the squared. And then I'm going to take the sign that's between the x squared and the 6x and write that next. And then the plus 9, the number at the end that I added to both sides of the equation in the previous step, I'm going to take the square root of 9, which is 3, and put that inside the parentheses as well. x plus 3 squared is the factorization of x squared plus 6x plus 9. That process of bringing down the x, bringing down the plus sign, and bringing down the square root of 9 will always work if you completed the square as described in step 3. The other side of the equation doesn't change at this step. It remains a 2. Once the equation is factored, step 5 is to take the square root of both sides of the equation. I'll take the square root of x plus 3 to the second power, and I'll take the square root of 2. However, when you introduce a square root into an equation, you have to be sure to include a plus or minus on the constant. The square root of the quantity of x plus 3 squared is simply x plus 2. Or, I'm sorry, the square root of the quantity of x plus 3 squared is simply x plus 3. And so now I have x plus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 2. At this point, we're very close to solving this equation for x. Step, four, or step 6 says solve for x, and that simply involves subtracting 3 from both sides of the equation. Subtracting 3 from both sides gives us the solution x equals, and I'm going to write the negative 3 first, and the plus or minus the square root of 2 second. And this expression, negative 3 plus or minus 2, represents the two solutions to the quadratic equation. The two solutions are negative 3 plus the square root of 2 and negative 3 minus the square root of 2. These are the only two values that would be solutions to the quadratic equation that we solved. Let's practice what we've just discussed. I want you to solve the equation 2x squared plus 20x minus 8 equals 0 by completing the square on your own. Do this problem step by step using the six steps that I just described and see if you can get the answer on your own. At this point, I want you to pause the recording and try to solve this on your own. After you've solved it, go ahead and press play and I'll discuss the results of each of the six steps and what the final answer to this quadratic equation is. Okay, hopefully you've solved the equation on your own by now. Let's take a look at the answer. Well, the first step is to rewrite it so that the coefficient on x squared is a 1. In this case, that would involve dividing everything on both sides by 2 which would yield x squared plus 10x minus 4 equals 0. The second step is to isolate the constant term, to move the 4 to the right side of the equation in this case. The third step is to actually complete the square. This is where we take the coefficient of x, 10 in this problem, cut it in half to get a 5, and then square it to get 25. 
and 25 is the value that you add to both sides of the equation. Again, this 25 came from taking 10, cutting it in half to get 5, and then squaring it to get 25. The fourth step is the factor, and again, after you complete the square, the factorization is always a perfect square. We bring down the variable x, bring down the plus sign, and the square root of 25 is 5. So the factorization of x squared plus 10x plus 25 is the quantity of x plus 5 squared. On the right side of the equation, 4 plus 25 is 29. Step 5 is to take the square root of both sides of the equation, including a plus or minus in front of the constant. And in this case, that would be the square root of x plus 5 squared equals plus or minus the square root of 29. Go ahead and uh, take the square root of a quantity squared and just get the x plus 5. And then step 6 is to solve for x, which is to simply subtract 5 from both sides of the equation. And that yields the solution to the quadratic equation 2x squared plus 20x minus 8 equals 0 by completing the square. x equals negative 5 plus the square root of 29 and negative 5 minus the square root of 29.